Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka welcoming you to another half hour of Rural Heritage TV. This week we're going to North Carolina to the farm of Bobby Tripp where the North Carolina Workhorse and Mule Association is holding their annual spring plow day. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rural yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is Fieldwork, showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. We have, uh, like I say, there's, uh, if I think there's about five Teamsters that participate with us all the time, and we do everything from plant oats to row crop some to bale hay. We've got some of everything going on there. Pretty cool. And then part of that preserving heritage, you've got a lot of public that are stopping by here that are seeing some of them probably for the first time up close, this kind yeah, of stuff. Oh yeah, like some of the folks where we, we're demonstrating the walking plow today, a lot of those have never done it before. And then you'll have a few that say, oh, I've done this a time or two somewhere, like if they may have been to one of our events or something. But so you see some coming back, but very few that you walk up and down a walking plow with have ever been on it before. Yeah. Your club is doing pretty good? Yes, we're growing. Each year we seem to grow good. We're having a lot of newcomers come in that are participating and taking on jobs and uh, and really, you know, pitching in, helping out, and which has been a big relief. And they're not, you know, a lot of us are, you know, getting up in some age, and a lot of the ones that's coming in, 
you know, they seem to, you know, be a little younger, which we're excited about. That's pretty rare, actually. Oh, it is. We're finding them hit, hit and miss, but it's still building to it in hopes that, you know, if it continues on, we can keep growth going. Mules and horses. Mules More and horses. If you notice today, you'll see several teams of mules. One team, two teams of mules that normally plow with us didn't make it today. Okay. And uh, for reasons, they already had stuff set up to go do or whatever and couldn't make it. But we seem to, it's about becoming a balance of mules and horses. You know, still more horses, but it's a lot of mules kicking in now. You, you don't seem to uh, enjoy teaching people how to plow over Oh, there. I do enjoy it. Yes, I do. I enjoy the, the youngsters doing it and the ladies, and they, they all seem to have a good time doing it. And I enjoy watching the expression as they do it. They, uh, well, for one thing, they get surprised probably in how the plow works backwards. And that's a hard for everybody to catch hold of because they want to steer it in the direction it needs to go. Right, right. So it is a change. And I always say the children and the women do better than the men because they don't fight it so hard. You get some folks, uh, men particularly probably, that that did it years and years ago, but now they get a chance to do it again. I saw one fellow out there that maybe that was what was going on. He did good. One of the guys did good with it. And one said he forgot how hard it was and he wouldn't come back. No, he didn't say he wouldn't come back. <laughs> but he said it was a whole lot harder than it used to be, it felt like. You spent a lot of time on the plow, Bryce? Riding along? Yeah. We ride along. They make a lot of hay. You put up hay with the horses? Uh, you mow it? Well, we rake, rake it. it. Then you round bale it, probably? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We do some squares. I square bale my alfalfa. Okay. It's kind of hard to get help for that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We put up a lot of straw square bales. But... So you do oats then, or? Uh, no, we raise wheat. Okay. Tell me your horses' names. Uh, Randy and Doc. How old are they? Uh, five and six. Okay. All right. And you pull a couple times a year with them? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. They do pretty good for you? Yeah. Yeah. I bet they do. Thank you. Pretty long furrow, isn't it? It is. It's long legs from one end to the other. Yeah, it goes on for quite a while. Mules are getting a workout. They it's are. a warm day. 
It is, it is warm. And the warm. sun comes out shining on them. Yeah, it's warmer than it's been. Yeah. Yeah. They're still haired up too, and that doesn't help anything. Tell me how to spell your last name again. It's P O R R O V E C C H I O. Is that Italian? Yes. Okay. Yep. What do you do with your mules besides this kind of thing? Is this um, mostly it? Well, no. Um, I do a lot of plowing at home, too, as well. And uh, use them to keep the pastures straight, drag the pastures and, and that kind of stuff. And we take them out on the wagon every once in a while when the weather's good. But biggest, biggest workouts coming coming to the club plow days. Two or three in the spring and two or three in the fall. Plowing at home, is that garden or do you put, do you have a field that you plow or? No, I've, I've started putting in teff to make hay. Teff. Uh-huh, T-E-F-F. -F. It's a summer, it's a summer grass. Um, it kind of grows, it's a real tall, it makes a good hay for equines. Really? Yeah, and it's, I've got light land like this and I've tried fescue and I've tried orchard grass and if I get a droughty summer, I'll lose it. Um, Bermuda grass is really best suited for my soil, but that's hard to get established. So I've done TEF two years now and it's an annual, so you plow and put it in the spring. Okay. And it's a little, little tiny seed. It looked like a dot you'd make with an ink pen. Um, and sow it with a rolling sower with a brilliant sower. And uh, it, it works It works pretty good for me to make hay. And I did um, two whole, two acres with my mules one spring. I didn't, and then last spring, we did a couple acres and a bunch of people from the club came. We didn't have an official plow day, but um, we had four teams working and we knocked out that two acres in about four or five hours. So. so that's plowing and then disking and then dragging and then sowing and then rolling? We didn't do all, all of that. All the seeding, we, okay. No, we, did, we plowed we it all. Prepared the seed bed. Yeah, we, yep. we plowed it all. Um, when I did it by myself, I did about two acres. I plowed it, then I disked it with a tractor. And then because the teff seed is so small, you've got to roll it. you got to put a cultimulture over it and roll it. And I did all the rolling with it, with the mules, and then. So do you broad it. you broadcast it? No, you sew it with a, a brilliant. The, okay. Yeah, I'm, I know you've seen them before. Yep. 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 Yeah, you sew it with a brilliant cedar. And then the cultivar makes contact with the soil. It presses it in. Yep. Yep. Keeps it from blowing away, and it makes sure it it's yep. got good good surface. And you've got to have a really firm seed bed for it because it, it can only be less than a quarter of an inch deep or when it sprouts, it won't make it, it won't bust right. through the soil. Right. So you kind of got to watch the weather. I've had a couple of times I've sown it and I've got a really hard rain after it and it, and it washed just a little bit and you could tell everywhere the water had moved the seed around. So it's, it's a little bit finicky, but it, it makes good hay and it's, it's I know it's a fresh start every spring, so but you, you got that, but it's it's done well for me. Is the seed hard to get a hold of? No, it hasn't been. Okay. It hasn't been. I don't know what'll happen this spring. Yeah, right, but, right, right. <laughs> you know, that'll fight the supply chain issues that everybody else is fighting, but up until now, it's been easy for me to get. Is this your team? It is, yeah. They're working good for you. They are working good. They, uh, I've had them about eight, nine years. But it's the first time we've plowed in about three and a half years. I have did a lot of weddings and Christmas parades. And so pulling people movers, carriages. Yeah, and wagons and vis-a-vis. It's different pulling a rolling a rolling load than it is a dead load like a plow. Yeah, there's it? a, a lot of difference, especially if the wagon and the buggy's on pavement or solid path or something. You, Right. Yeah, but this putting the plow in the dirt, that's a different Ow. ball game. This I, uh, Pioneer foot lift plow? It is. You like it? I do. Yeah. This one is not mine. I have one just like it at home, but 
Bobby was nice enough to let me just use this and I wouldn't have to load and unload one. Yeah, so, makes a Yeah, this one's uh, probably two, couple years newer than mine, but, but it's the exact, exact same plow. What kind of farming do you do at home? Produce now, oh, vegetables, oh. sweet corn, squash, oh. potatoes, uh, the cabbage. Oh, we've, got, we've had a roadside stand for about 30 oh. years. Oh, really? On the traffic circle at Newton Grove. Oh, okay. But my mom was 85 and I'm 80. I'm 66 and we just grow and sell what we can right there at the farm. We don't have to leave. We got an air conditioned yeah. building there and you know it gets hot and we, oh, yeah. we we don't have to load it up and take we used to load it up and drive four miles to the traffic circle in Newton Grove. And it's a good spot, but we just stay at home now. It's a lot smaller. We used to do a lot of farming. A lot Probably more. Got some regular customers though. We do. We like do. It. We do. Yep. That's kind of uh, a bit of labor intensive work. Some it of that, is. Some of that vegetables. It is. It is. Uh, especially in sweet corn season, we have to get up and pull the sweet corn early in the morning so we have it fresh. Yep. So it's, this is March right now, you got it planted already? We we don't have the sweet corn, we'll probably start, depending on the weather, the day's what, the 18th? Yeah, uh, 19, 19, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll probably start, we may plant some, to, today would be a good day, but I won't hear, if, yeah. but I'm here, but anyway, we'll probably start Tuesday, Wednesday, if it's not too rainy. But mm -hmm. more than likely, usually it's about the 27th, 28th of March before we plant any. But we plant some about every four days. So we plant a little bit every four days, so we always we start right. planting in last week of March and plant right up until oh I don't know about the middle of August. The, we start pulling corn about June the tenth, give or take a few days, and we stop around October, first of October. How old is this team? They are. 11, 11, they're half brothers. Okay. They got same father, daddy and different moms. Did you raise them you bought them? No, I bought them up in the Amish country in Ohio. Yeah. Most of my horses came from up that way, the Frisians, the Gypsies. Well, you got Gypsy Vanners too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I bet they like, the, the, the wedding parties like to have either the Frisians or the Gypsies they on those do. They yeah. do. They do. The, my sister, she likes the Gypsies. She, they have all that hair and it's fancy. they love to play with the hair, but yeah. it's, it's a lot to clean. It sure is. But they, you know, they, they're, they're easy keepers. Gypsy Vanners are easy keepers. I don't ever remember having to call a vet to one. They got a real history. Over, over in yeah, they, they come from, uh, I guess, uh, Wales or somewhere. Yeah. I, I can't remember. I'm, I should know. Frisians, they go way back. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was nice visiting with you. I yeah, thank you, it. Joe. I appreciate thank it, too. Much. Thank you for coming today. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.